If you voted for Barack Obama because he said this. Well, the first thing I'd do as president is, is sign the Freedom of Choice Act. Uh, that's the first. And, and, and if you believed him, turns out you were a sucker because as soon as he got it. Uh, now, the Freedom of Choice Act is not my highest legislative priority. Bam! <laughs> Psych. Or maybe you voted for Joe Biden because he said. I would send immediately to the desk of the United States Congress when I'm elected president, if I'm elected president, a codification of Roe v. Wade amended by Casey. And of course, we all know he didn't do that. Well, Jimmy, what is codification anyway? So if you voted for either of those two guys or you voted Democrat because you cared about abortion, you're a chump and a sucker. And who makes you a chump and a sucker? Not me. Joe Biden and Barack Obama made you a chump and a sucker. Not me, Barack Obama. And so what is codification? The legislation would use federal authority to invalidate anti-abortion state laws. So let's. So it makes clear no state government shall enact or enforce any law, rule, regulation, standard, or other provision having the force and effect of law that conflicts with any provision of this act. So if Joe Biden and Barack Obama would have signed that act, state states could not now pass a law to restrict abortion because that would be codified in federal law. Federal law supersedes state law. That's why. That's what codification means. OK, so now we have Kamala Harris tweets out, I know there are women out there who are afraid. To those of you who feel alone and scared, I want you to know the president and I are fighting for you and your rights. We are in this fight together, except he's not fighting. <laughs> Biden says the right to choose is fundamental, but is not prepared to call for a change of the filibuster to protect those rights. So those fundamental rights have to go because I really like the filibuster. I got to think for it. Is, is, a, is the filibuster a right? No. What about the right to privacy? That's a fundamental right. But why do you want to keep the thing that's not a right and you have to get rid of the thing that's fundamental? Because I'm a bullshitter. And people will vote. Because if I actually codified it into law, then people would stop voting for Democrats. Because then what would they get them to vote for? We don't do shit for them. When Obama took office, we had big majorities in the House and Senate. They could have codified Roe versus Wade, banned assault rifles, codified voting rights, and the whole list. They chose to keep the filibuster, requiring Democrats to get permission from Republicans to do literally anything. And then Caitlin Johnson has the right response. What's the correct response when a mainstream political party keeps communicating that they'll never do anything to help you? But you need to support them anyway, or they'll let their friends in the other mainstream political party take away your rights. What's the correct response? The correct response is to stop voting for them and stop donating to them. Now, people like Kyle Kalinske will say we're nihilists. People like Kyle and, Ra and Rachel, what's her name? Crystal will say we're nihilists. We're telling you that. But uh, those are people, what, what they are is called sheepdogs. They're sheepdogging you into a anti-worker, pro-Wall Street, pro-war party. And how do you fight that? You stop donating to Democrats and you stop voting for Democrats and Republicans. And Republicans. That's that's what we have to do. Um, and so and so but these beat these, I don't know. They're not going to stop. Look what this guy's. Uh, you know what? I, I want to. I don't want to bear. I want to save that for the next. Okay. <laughs> Here it is. Nancy Pelosi says Democrats focus on abortion access is hurting the party. Ah. When did she say that? She said that in 2017. She said that when Trump was president. Here's another one. As Democratic Party leadership condemns the Supreme Court ruling, a reminder that Nancy Pelosi, Steny Hoyer, and Jim Clyburn are all endorsing anti-choice Henry Cuellar in his primary against Cisneros, and, and Clyburn is doing a campaign rally in San Antonio with Cuellar tomorrow. So they're out there campaigning for anti-abortion Democrats over pro-choice Democrats. And the real problem, again, I, I have to remind people this, is the Democrat, and so if you say, oh, the Supreme Court, that's why you have to vote Democrat, they don't give, 
Barack Obama could have appointed could have, could have appointed Merrick Garland in a recess appointment. He didn't do it on purpose. Why? So you would have to vote for Hillary. That's how cynical they are. But guess what? Didn't work. People, not enough people voted for Hillary, and Trump won anyway. And what did the Democrats now say about that? The Democrats, Chris Kang, who worked in the Obama White House for six years and played a central role in getting his judicial nominees confirmed, said that there's no question Democrats could have done more to push Garland's nomination through, even if they had limited options in the minority. They didn't do anything. They wanted to use Merrick Garland to get you to vote for Hillary, and it didn't work. So they're the ones... Again, let's keep our eye on the powerful. That's that's what they don't want you to do. They want you to blame your neighbor. But of course, the Democrats could have did this. We should have shut down the Senate. Senator Brian Schatz of Hawaii, a Democrat, said we made a calculation that we were going to win in 2016 and and confirm the nominee. And it didn't work. So they thought they were going to have Hillary. And they didn't. So it's the pot. That's a guy admitting their failure. That's good to see a senator, a powerful person, one of the most powerful 50 people in the world. The issue was, frankly, with Merrick Garland himself, because Barack Obama picked a corporatist who nobody was excited about. He was too moderate and too boring for some, and he just didn't excite progressives. So nobody cared that he wasn't appointing him. They didn't care enough to go rally, fight and march for it. And that was on purpose. And now the real reason why we got the Supreme Court that we have today, it's because the Democrats rigged their own primary for a candidate who couldn't beat a game show host. You think I'm kidding? Let's remember how they rigged their primary. This is from 2016. All right, Bernie Sanders' winning streak continued over the weekend with a victory in the Wyoming caucuses on Saturday. Sanders beat Hillary Clinton by 12 points, 56 to 44, notching his eighth win in the last nine okay. nominating contests. Okay, okay, what do we do here? I mean, it so, sounds so like he's call. winning. You, he's won eight out of nine. Yep. But he's here, and look, and look, he wins by 12 points. I tell you, I would not do well as a Democratic politician. <laughs> he wins by 12 points. He may not even pick up a single delegate. Yeah. It's seven to six now with a remaining delegate to be decided later. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. That's a crushing victory. I know. And listen, I think that with the super delegates that they have, I think she only has to win 30% of the, she only has to get 30% of the vote in the uh, remaining contest. I mean, talk about voters feeling like a system well, might be and, 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 Why are you if, even voting? If, if you're driving a right. car right now, we've been talking about rigged systems. We're putting up right now a graphic. Bernie Sanders wins 56 to 44% in Wyoming. The delegates rewarded. Hillary Clinton, 11, Bernie Sanders, 7. Why does the Democratic Party even have voting booths? No, why? This system is so rigged. (laughs) So maybe that's why we got Donald Trump as president, because the powerful rigged the primary election for the worst candidate in the history of our country. Nobody, nobody was more hated, nobody than Hillary Clinton when they ran for president than Hillary Clinton. And I don't know if you remember this, why Tim Kaine can oppose abortion and still run with Hillary Clinton. She picked an anti-abortion guy to run with her. Two strains of thought I've wrestled with. The party I voted for for decades is incompetent or the party I voted for for decades is complicit. That's the answer. If I, on the left, am responsible for this mess, it's only because I took way too long to decide that neither was acceptable. Well, well said. Neither, if they're complicit or incompetent, neither are acceptable. And Nancy Pelosi read a poem. I know. <laughs> she read a poem. That, that was her response. She read a poem. And Ryan Knight says, kneeling in kente cloth and reading poetry is how Democrats respond to injustice and inequality. It's no wonder they always lose, even when they hold a majority. They are worse than useless, and they are taking up space where a real left party should be. And of course, there's morons like Stephen King who blame Susan Collins. (laughs) (laughs) 
So now you know why brilliance in one area doesn't necessarily translate to brilliance in another. He's as dumb as Joy Behar. What did Susan Collins do? I don't even know. Uh, I, I I guess she voted to confirm Amy Coney Barrett. It was like that. She oh. voted to she voted to confirm these justices who ended up voting against abortion. That was it. Yes. Yeah. But Democrat, but people aren't taking it anymore. Uh, well, some people aren't, and some people we're going to get to in our next segment are, are now heckling Democrats <laughs> and saying that uh, voting blue just won't do. So we're going to show you that Democrats are being heckled. They're being heckled over this abortion thing, finally. And that's up next. Anything you guys want to say about this? I'm just happy to see that all the people who are supporting vaccine mandates are back to supporting medical freedom and choice. So how can you support? How can you say my body, my choice, and then be for vaccine mandates? Those those things are contradictory. You know what else is contradictory, Jackson? Is people who say uh bodily autonomy when it comes to mandates but not when it comes to pregnancy both ways so it goes so there's hypocrisy both ways so there's the people who are anti-mandate which which is the correct position because they say bodily autonomy but then they don't say bodily autonomy for abortion so that's what i say like i don't want a g-man in between the relationship between a woman and her doctor I don't need the government in between that. I'm going to leave it up to a doctor and the woman. So whether it's morally right or wrong, even I'm not going to make that call. That's going to I don't want a government guy in between. So that's consistent. But what's inconsistent with you, but what's inconsistent are the people who say my body, my choice. But you have to get a mandate. You have to get a mandated vaccine. Those those things are contradictory, not consistent and the other side of the coin is the people who say bodily autonomy with the vaccine but not with your pregnancy so i appreciate you bringing that up jackson that was very good (laughs) july 3rd we're doing a live show in los angeles and then we're going to chicago sacramento san diego bakersfield see you there go to jimmynorcomedy.com for a link for all our tickets Mm -hmm. 